The EU's top court says employers can fire anyone who wears religious symbols at work. But for many Muslim women, the headscarf is not a symbol but a requirement. So how will this affect them and other religious minorities? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Dereen Abu Gaida. Amnesty International has described the ruling by the European Court of Justice as discriminating against men and women on the basis of their religious belief. Although the decision will affect anyone who displays their religious affiliation, critics argue it's Muslim women wearing the hijab who will be most affected. Well, the court issued a joint judgment in the cases of two women from France and Belgium who were fired for refusing to remove their headscarves. The ruling is being celebrated by far-right politicians in Europe, where there has been a recent rise in nationalism and anti-Muslim sentiment. But it's not just Muslims who are concerned. The Conference of European Rabbis issued a statement saying Europe was sending a clear message that its faith communities were no longer welcome. Neutrality means you leave a certain amount of room for people to dress as they please and for their own reasons. It will contribute to an uncertainty and for some employers it could act as a prop to prevent some women from carrying out their professions with this as a reason. I don't think it's a problem in general if people use religious symbols. If, for example, I had a colleague who wore a cross as a necklace, I wouldn't have a problem with it. So I think it's pretty discriminating and pretty unnecessary because my headscarf doesn't stop me from doing my job in any way, so I do find it discriminating. I don't think it's a good thing because everybody is free to decide what they wear and how they wear it at their place of work. And to just hand out general bans to people doesn't help. It just makes things worse. Now let's bring in our guests. In Brussels, we have Daria Safai. She's a women's rights activist and founder of the Let Iranian Women Enter Their Stadiums campaign. Joining us via Skype from Antwerp is Maryam Hamoudoun. She's a policy officer for equality and inclusion at the Open Society Justice Initiative and also a co-founder of Boss of My Own Head. That's a group that campaigns on this particular issue. Also in Brussels, Eva Brems. She's a professor of human rights law at the University of Ghent. She's also a legal expert on the headscarf issue. And during a short stint in politics, Eva was the only member of the Belgian parliament to vote against the face veil ban. Welcome, all of you, to Inside Story. Eva, uh, the language used in this ruling is that it is legal for corporations to enforce a ban on all quote, religious clothing. However, critics saying there's a sense that this is specifically uh, targeting Muslim women. It's a thinly veiled measure targeting these women who are wearing the hijab. Is that how you see it? Indeed, I, I think you're absolutely correct. Most people who will be affected by this ruling will be Muslim women. And I think it is quite surprising that we see hardly any recognition in the judgment of that simple fact. I mean, there's hardly any recognition of the whole societal context in which this judgment lands and in which veil-wearing women in Europe face all kinds of discrimination. I'm afraid, actually, that, this, that this, this ruling will only further strengthen stereotypes against this, these women. If, if I can tell you a, a small anecdote, Judge Lenartz, the president of the European Court of Justice, when he was reading the judgment yesterday in his own language, our language Dutch, he said not Islamic headscarf. In fact, he said Islamist headscarf. Now, this is only one letter difference in Dutch, but anyone who has ever been involved in any discussion on Islam and society knows that this is a crucial difference. Apparently, the European Court of Justice does not. Uh, Daria, can you weigh in on this? Um, actually, I think the judgment of the uh, court is not really discriminatory because it is not about the, only the Muslim women. It has told about all of the sort of um, politic or uh, religious signs and and I don't need I don't need any reason I don't I don't see any reason 
that Muslim women are the only group that are targeted. It's something about neutrality on the work. And I think, obviously, it is written that it, this is against discriminatory laws. And they told in very special conditions the employers can ask about to keeping the neutrality on the work. So this is how I see this uh, uh, judgment. And Maryam, and I know that you have said you were disappointed by this ruling. How so and why? Well, I find this ruling really disappointing and disheartening because what the European Court of Justice does here is basically provide a recipe for discrimination and call it legitimate, a legitimate neutrality policy because it supposedly targets all religious groups equally, but it does not. It distinguishes between people based on their beliefs. Namely, it distinguishes between people who manifest their beliefs through their dress and people who have beliefs that they do not manifest through their dress. It clearly privileges the dominant majority population in Europe, which holds secular beliefs that are not manifested th uh, through their dress, uh, over religious, other religious minorities. Now, some may say that there are also many Christians uh, uh, in Europe. Obviously, there are so many Christians that manifest uh, their beliefs by, for example, wearing a cross. But I think you would agree that hiding a cross around your neck by just putting it under your shirt poses a, not much of a challenge compared to hiding a headscarf or a turban or a, a kippah for Jewish men. So this judgment does distinguish, does discriminate between religious groups, namely based on uh, uh, the manifestation uh, of beliefs. That are, there are groups that hold beliefs that they manifest through their dress, and there are groups that hold beliefs that they do not manifest through, through their dress. So here, there is a clear discrimination on the ground of religion. This is not neutrality. This is a recipe for discrimination. And it is really disheartening that the highest court of Europe, the European Court of Justice of all courts, comes out with a ruling like this. Daria, what do you say to that? And especially uh, this, uh, this point that Maryam is putting forward, that the hijab, seeing that it's not a symbol, but rather it's a requirement, so that must complicate uh, this whole issue. I think, um, I believe that hijab is a symbol of discrimination. So in my eyes, um, that is always... Um, I don't see any reason to insist on having hijab because it's a sort of, uh, for me as an Iranian woman who has seen a lot of discrimination because it's not an innocent piece of uh, clothing. It has a lot of meaning and uh, the philosophy behind it. Uh, bans women from all the equality and their rights. But without I, getting I into a discussion any, via, uh, on religion, without them. getting into a discussion on on religion, I, I think this is this is just uh, the hijab is also the symbol of the religious. Why should why should it be other? I mean, the the way that they they should be treated is just the same, and this is the basic right of keeping the the work uh, the the work neutral this is the basic right of an employer so it is very special situation that they decide to do this and i think as a the muslim women should be ready to open themselves to the society to to living together and to understand that um that they can do better, it's, it doesn't matter with or without hijab on work, but they can progress and they can go forward, even if it is without. Because what I don't understand is why should we uh, insist on something that it is something um, private, we can keep it for ourselves, our beliefs, and just going like the other people on the work without having the religious and political and philosophic signs Imagine tomorrow someone wants to come with the, the, the signs of communism. I mean, those are the things that it is the right of uh, uh, employer to say, in my, uh, at my work, it's not accepted. Eva, Eva, I'll come over to you in just a moment, messages. but Miriam, go ahead, because I see you'd like to interject. There are so many points I, I feel I need to add here. First of all, it, I mean, as a Muslim woman and as a feminist, it. it in essence, does not really matter what religious scholars say, as long as Muslim women who uh, want to practice their faith, uh, 
by wearing a headscarf uh, 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 choose to do so. It, it is really important that they uh, that their choice of doing so is guaranteed uh, guaranteed here, irrespective of what religious scholars say. And this this choice, this right, is even acknowledged by the European Court of Justice. It says that manifesting your religion in public is a fundamental right. But then it turns around and legit legitimizes a policy that allows banning this uh, banning uh, uh, religious dress, and that is something that is really illogical and inconsistent. Um, and we should be having the debate about that. Aside from that, I mean, uh, just a comment on uh, uh, what Ms. Uh, uh, Safai just said. We are talking about women here who want to work. They are working or wanting to, uh, to find employment with these businesses. These are women who are participating in society. These are women who want to take up uh, uh, employment. They, only do not feel comfortable, they do not want to jeopardize their right to observe their religion freely. In a democratic society, you should be able to do both things. You should be able to just practice your religion freely and work. It is possible in other countries. I mean, no country has disappeared off the face of the earth for uh, uh, allowing Muslim women to have both rights. There are examples. It's just a few countries in Europe Belgium and France, amongst others, that have led us astray uh, uh, um, in, uh, um, when we talk about this issue. And it is really problematic and disappointing that the European Court of Justice has Europeanized, basically, this Franco-Belgian problem. It shouldn't have. It should have protected uh, uh, the rights uh, um, of Muslim women, but also other religious So why do you think that this is being done right freedom. now, then? Why do you think this, is, uh, this ruling has, has come out uh, at this particular time, then, Maryam? I mean, it is really difficult these days. We know for, for policymakers, for national lawmakers, for even courts sometimes to, to display the courage that is needed to protect particular religious minorities that are not very popular uh, uh, in Europe uh, uh, right now. I mean, I don't have to uh, uh, explain the increase in Islamophobia in Europe worldwide, basically, uh, uh, and how policymakers have kind of uh, uh, adopted uh, all kind of uh, uh, rules to exclude uh, 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 Muslims from, from social life, from economic life, uh, um, uh, and so forth. It is a disappointment that a court uh, fails us, especially one of the stature of the European Court of Justice, because it does have a reputation of setting up the bar for justifying unequ unequal treatment really high, and it fails to do so at this point. But I mean, this is the context we live in right now. It takes a lot of courage to protect those who are discriminated against in a context where it, it is generally accepted by a lot of politicians, uh, 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 large parts of, uh, uh, of the public. I mean, history has proven that uh, 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 our institutions tend to come uh, 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 to adjust really late to uh, the norms of uh, equality and, and, and freedom okay, for all. Okay, speaking of equality, Ava, the EU, EU laws, in fact, prohibit companies uh, from discriminating on the grounds of sex, race, color, ethnic origin, language, as you know, religion or belief. So doesn't this ruling here uh, weaken the guarantee of equality that the EU lives by and preaches? Indeed. Um, you know, regardless of whether this rule touches Muslim women more than uh, other religious people, if you have a rule in place in Europe that bans discrimination on grounds of religion, you are, I think, entitled to expect that a company policy of so-called neutrality that is interpreted in a way that it is in fact hostile to all expressions of religion, that such a company policy would be considered discriminatory. But that's not what the European Court of Justice says. In fact, what it actually says is if you want to get rid of headscarf wearers in your company, the only thing you have to do is adopt a policy of so-called neutrality. There is no questioning whatsoever of why people would interpret neutrality in this manner. In an Islamophobic context, reacting to client 
preferences that that may actually be racist uh, client preferences and that you then disguise as something neutral I think it's quite bizarre because you know the French woman uh, who brought her case uh, before the European Court of Justice actually won her case because in her company there was not a general policy of neutrality in place and there the court said if the ban on religious symbols is simply a reaction to customer preferences, then it is unacceptable. Eh? Then it is just going along with the discriminatory attitude of your customers. And you cannot do that. But the line between that situation and the Belgian one is so Thin. And an employer that does not yet have such a so-called neutrality policy in place today simply has to adopt one and from tomorrow on can start discriminating because that is indeed what it is. Well, speaking of the workplace, so even before this ruling, Muslim women had been some of the least successful groups at work in Europe. So there's one study from Britain and it shows there are three, they are three times more likely to be unemployed than any other women. And the research also found that Muslim women are 71 percent more likely to be unemployed compared to white Christian women. And it shows that 58% of British Muslim women were economically inactive in 2015 compared to 27% of all women. There's another study, and this time it's by the European Network Against Racism. It suggests that widespread discrimination against Muslim women trying to find work in Europe. So it shows that in Belgium, 44% of employers agreed that wearing the headscarf can negatively influence the selection of candidates in in Germany, 3% of women pictured with a headscarf on their CV were only invited to an interview. And in Britain, one in eight women of Pakistani descent were asked about marriage in their job interviews, whereas only one in 30 white women were asked that same question. Uh, Daria, d does it not concern you that this ruling could encourage employers not to hire uh, women uh, who practice Islam and wear the headscarf? I think there is no reason to think about not hiring a Muslim woman because this is, um, even in Islam, the uh, headscarf is not something obliged. You can just, um, like other sign of religious, you can just put it uh, beside and just go on your work, uh, keep your beliefs and, ha and, and have it when you are on street or wh wherever you are. But I think it's, it's not, it doesn't have any influence on it. But we should work on it like the women from origin uh, from muslim origins they should work on it that, and they should make it acceptable look if i talk about the uh, schools uh, in uh, brussels in in belgium if i talk about the children the the girls of the muslim community but they go to the school they participate the the lessons they go to the swimming pools they they participate the sport uh, areas why should we think that it's not possible for other women to do the same and to participate the the uh, society like it should be because i don't see any reason there is no barrier for them it's just something that for all all other sort of religion and other political uh, beliefs they are they keep it and i think they should not feel themselves uh, address. This is not about that really, but we should do our best to go for war in the society, to study more and more, to have more power, empower the women. I, I don't look at hijab uh, like something empowering, but okay, this is another discussion. We, are, we're, we can talk at an, another uh, opportunity. But That's right. Let's keep the focus on the ruling. The people so who are thinking those uh, uh, Maryam, on this particular ruling and women in the uh, workplace, you heard me read out those are... statistics. So uh, same yes. question to you. Are you concerned that this will encourage employers not to hire uh, women who wear the headscarf Definitely. as well Definitely. as well as I mean, this ruling is effectively uh, it's said to target any religious uh, symbol. So uh, will it also affect other uh, religions? I mean, it will definitely affect Muslim uh, uh, women uh, 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 disproportionately, especially those who wear a, a headscarf, because that's what uh, uh, the ban is about. And I mean, uh, it is those statistics are really important because it is important to know that Muslim women face barriers uh, in employment, not only because they are Muslim women, uh, 
uh, or because they wear a headscarf, but also because, often because they are uh, of uh, particular ethnic minorities, because they are women as well, uh, because of other uh, char personal uh, characteristics. So they are in this intersectional position that really uh, uh, um, limits them uh, in society. So it is up to us to make sure that we do not uh, that we take away these barriers and not add uh, uh, new barriers to their uh, uh, opportunities uh, uh, in the labor market, which is, in my uh, point of view, exactly what the European Court of Justice did. It just uh, uh, enforced uh, uh, a barrier limiting uh, Muslim women's participation in the labor market. As for other groups, uh, for example, uh, uh, Sikhs uh, who wear a turban, uh, Jewish men who wear a kippah, they are affected uh, uh, by this uh, judgment as well. But it is clear, and everyone will agree to that, that the disproportionate effect here is on Muslim women. It is not an accident, it is not a coincidence that two the two cases that are at the heart of this judgment uh, were brought forth by Muslim women who wear a headscarf. What we've seen in, in Europe in general, that these uh, policies, these company policies for neutrality tend to pop up only when uh, uh, employers uh, um, are presented with uh, uh, Muslim women employees who wear a headscarf. So it is clear uh, what group is tar targeted here, although uh, the actual impact is greater than, than Muslim women. Ava, so how do you remove these barriers that Maryam is uh, talking about when it comes to discrimination against women who wear the hijab in the workplace in Europe? Well, let's be clear. The ruling of the European Court of Justice does not encourage or let alone oblige employers to discriminate against women who wear a headscarf. So what I'm hoping for is that, you know, the law is not the end of the story, that there are many employers out there who indeed choose not to go along with this kind of discrimination and that they might actually But it does be a give companies legal they... cover to do so should they wish uh, to go down that route. No, um, you're right. Uh, if a company wishes to go down that route, there are very few barriers. I have to add one nuance to the discussion, though. It is not so that the court has said you can fire any woman who wears a headscarf or someone who wears another religious uh, symbol immediately. So you first need to have that general policy in place. And second, it applies only to employees who have direct contact with customers because it is linked to this idea of the neutrality in the image of the corporation uh, in relation to the outside world. So you would have as an employer to first uh, consider whether you can offer that particular employee a back office position. Now, I'm not saying that makes it any less bad. In fact, if you think about it, it is, it's, it's, it's really terrible. It is closeting the headscarf wearing women, you know, saying, oh, you can exist, but we're a bit ashamed of you. We put you in the closets and, and, and there you can do maybe the less uh, interesting or at least less visible uh, jobs. It's really an acceptance of, of a second class uh, situation uh, for these women. So I think the situation is really bad. And I think at this moment, anti-discrimination law is not the answer. But we do still have human rights law. We do still have the right, the freedom to manifest one's religion. And I'm, if we want to be optimistic, we can hope that courts, and I'm talking about national courts today, would say, OK, uh, Court of Justice has said, uh, this kind of situation is not a discrimination, but it can still be considered legally a violation of religious freedom. And I'm really hoping that there are enough courageous judges and courts out there in Europe who would dare to say that and still stop uh, employers who would exclude uh, headscarf wearing women. Uh, Daria, final, final words to you, because I can see you uh, wanting to jump in there. Yeah. I think it's just very interesting to hear that uh, the thing that they, they, they are thinking that the women uh, go in the closet is because of uh, those sort of employer. But we forget very easily the thing that um, bans women from going and working as something else. It's something that inside itself there is a sort of uh, discriminatory laws and beliefs so I really don't agree with that I mean the thing that um, uh, keep women home 
is not really the employer and is not a uh, the employer who choose for it for special cases, and, and I say again, this is really special cases, this is the meaning and the concept of why should a woman have a hijab that keeps women home? And this is what sometimes is they, they, they don't see. All right, we'll leave it uh, on uh, there on that note. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Daria uh, Safai, M Maryam Ahmadoun, and Eva Brams. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for watching. You can see this program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, you can go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From myself and the whole team here in Doha, goodbye for now.